tuning in to another fun episode with your favorite mask moms, Jennifer, that's me, and Juliana. Hello. Lori today is having a little bit of R&R in Disney with the family, so it, you are stuck with us, <laughs> but she will hopefully be joining us um, soon. So today we have an exciting episode for you. We are going beyond the Mickey pretzel and the Rice Krispie treat to give you our top 10 favorite treats in Walt Disney World under $10. But of course, before we partake in all of this grub, we need to prepare our bellies with our Mouska cocktail. So with, an with an aperitif, if you will. So in keeping with our theme, we tried really hard to find a cocktail under $10 and we failed. We can admit that. It's not our fault. It's not. Um, if any of you out there know of one, please let us know. Um, we'd love to check it out. But this one is worth it. And it's perfect for this time of year when it's officially spring and spring is in the air. It really is. My nose is running all the time. Anyway, <laughs> doesn't that make you want to have a cocktail? Yes. Today's most good cocktail can be found in Chosa de Margarita, the kiosk outside the Mexico Pavilion in Epcot, one of our favorites. It's the cucumber margarita. Absolutely refreshing. This one rings in a little more than 10 at 1425. It's Blanco tequila, cucumber and lime juice, orange liqueur and agave, and then um, a tajin chili lime powder on the rim. So it's it's nice, nice and refreshing. What's that? Sweet and spicy. I like that. Yes. Sweet and spicy. So yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Good. It's a good one. And you're going to, you know, you're going to spend money on your snacks. Right. So, so let's save, money on, save money on your snacks. So let's start very close to where you can get this margarita. We've got our margarita. Now we're going to stroll around Epcot and look for some yummy snacks under $10. Yes. So in no particular order, <laughs> we did not rank our snacks, but we are going to give you two snacks in each of the four theme parks and in Disney Springs. We're going to give you a great um, bang for your buck for a sweet dish and then also something savory because snacks could be either. And a lot of these snacks are really cool because a lot of them really could be a meal, um, which is great. So starting in Epcot, we are going to go over to the France Pavilion, where we're actually going to find both our savory and our sweet treats. I love the France Pavilion. For our sweet treat, we are going to go to um, L'Artisan de Glace, which is their little ice cream kiosk. It's not a kiosk. It's actually a, a little it's a shop. storefront. Yeah. So yeah. like kind of like it's kind of like a if you I've recently discovered two places that I never really ventured into in France because we always go to Leal. And I um it's the wine shop mm. right there. Mm -hmm. Does not have a line when the kiosks do. Mm -hmm. yeah, but then the place essentially across the courtyard from the wine shop, um, that always does have a line is Lardis de Glass, like you're talking about. But um, it does, but it's worth the line. Pretty good. You know what I think is funny about this? I discovered in my brief journey abroad that you cannot get good ice cream in Paris. So it's really interesting to me. Like they're they're just like, granted, I have had the best ice cream of my entire life in France, but not in the city. We were always looking for ice cream. And even the Hagen dazs on the the Hagen dazs closed down while we were there. Interesting. I know. Side note, not relevant at all. <laughs> but I do find it interesting that like one of the busiest places in the France Pavilion in Epcot is Larnes and de Glace when they don't have such a place in Paris. I mean, I don't know. It's delicious. So when I go here, I always get the same thing. I get their croque glace which is a scoop of ice cream of your choice with your choice of a sauce in a homemade brioche that they press and warm it up. So it's like a warm ice cream sandwich in a brioche. So I like to get the coconut white chocolate ice cream with the raspberry sauce. It's really, really delicious. I think when, when I talked to the cast member there, they said that the chocolate on chocolate is like their biggest seller, but I'm not a chocolate ice cream kind of person. So. Wow. I know. I like chocolate everything else, but I don't love chocolate ice cream. So this was delicious. Coconut white chocolate with raspberry sauce. This one comes in at $9.50. So under yeah. $10, totally worth it. 
totally shareable. It's enormous. It is enormous. It's the size of a sandwich, like a real sandwich. I I happen to love any kind of ice cream sandwich. Um, sometimes been known to get a Mickey sandwich instead of a bar gasp. But um, I did try one of these once. I can't remember what ice cream I used, but I had them put the caramel sauce on it. And I, I will say if I do it again, I'm just going straight up ice cream and bread. The sauce made it a little sweet for me, but you all know that I have like a, a little bit of an aversion to too much sweet. So yeah. Try the coconut with raspberry sauce. Yeah, maybe I so should. Good. We'll share it because yes. it's shareable and then it we is can, shareable. can try a new flavor. Um, for 50, if we're sharing our, our snack, we can totally each get a $14 cocktail. There you go. <laughs> See, that's why I keep her around because she's so good at math. <laughs> so what else is there in Epcot? Yes. Yeah, so moving a little bit next door, also in the France Pavilion to what Juliana was talking about with Les, Les, Les Halles Boulangerie. I, yeah. I actually think, again, unrelated, I actually think they say, yeah, they say Les Halles. I never understand. Never mind. I'm just, I, French you pronunciation is really hard for me. Oh, Point is, I'm not an expert. I hear a lot of people calling it Les Halles, so I don't know. Whatever you call it, I, we're not going to call it. We're going to eat it. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I asked my French teacher specifically about this because there is a Les Halles in France, and I think they say Les Halles, even though you would think because the H is silent, they should pronounce the S by French rules, but they don't. Who knows? Who the but, hell knows? But we are going to go there and we are going to eat. And this is one of those, this is the savory snack that we're getting. And this is one of those snacks that really could be a meal. So it's great, especially because it's only coming in at $5.95. That's a deal. It is a steal. It, it really is, is. Yeah. We're So we're talking about your lobster bisque in a bread bowl. That's amazing. Yeah. Like when, when I first was looking at this, I was like, what do they give you for $5.95? Like a Dixie cup of lobster bisque? No. But it's actually in, in a, a bread bowl. bowl. This is a meal. Okay. This for me is an entire meal. And there's like, there's lobster in this bisque. They're not, I don't know. Maybe they're cheating and using langostinos. I don't know. But I'm telling you, it tastes like lobster and there's chunks. It's delish. And at five ninety five, you could probably get two fourteen dollar cocktails. <laughs> Again, what? math, yes, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. But then they're okay. I like it. It's yeah. Like so for fifteen dollars in the France Pavilion, you could get a delicious little meal and a delicious ice cream and be on your way. I love making meals out of snacks. Obviously we talk about that so much. And again, you can pair it with a nice margarita and it's delicious. <laughs> so, but let's move on to a park where you can't get a $10 cocktail ever. You, you can't get any cocktails. No, ever unless, unless you have a restaurant. table. Right. And we're not talking table service. So moving over to magic kingdom. Yes. So again, going with our theme of a sweet snack and a savory snack for our sweet snack, my newfound favorite thing to get is the waffle sandwich over at Sleepy Hollow in Liberty Square. Um, they serve this. It's a huge waffle, again, like the size of your head. <laughs> and they serve it with usually with bananas and strawberries and then top it with Nutella um, and blueberries are on there, too. And this one is $8.49. This one you could get for breakfast. Again, this could totally be a meal. Yeah. Um, so for $8.49, I think it's a steal. It's and this one used to be the, the only waffle over there that was a snack credit back when there were dining plans, right? Yes. And they do a lot of other waffle options as well. I know they do like a chicken and waffle. Oh, the chicken one is so good. It's like a spice. It's really spicy it chicken is. on a waffle, which I have come to love living where I live in the South. So, but that one is pricier. That one is, is definitely a meal. Pricey. I mean, for me, for um, sure. this one too, though, this one I've had for breakfast before, or it can just be your like yummy, delicious snack. Dessert. Oh, dessert. Yeah. Yum. Um, for something savory, I know we always, I, if Lori was here, she'd be rallying for those cheeseburger egg rolls, which definitely are a snack you can enjoy under $10. But for something different, you're going to go to Frontier, Frontierland, to the kiosk by the water. It's called Westward Ho. And they don't always serve this snack, so you got to get it at the right time. Um, but they have a candied bacon skewer 
it's like this insanely thick piece of bacon on a skewer candied. They usually serve it with some chips because, you know, the bacon isn't salty enough. Um, <laughs> and it's $9.99. What so. a deal. I love it. So forget the turkey leg. I am down to eat this hunk of meat on a stick. And let me tell you all people that are being like, ew, candy bacon. That doesn't sound good. I'll tell you a story about candied bacon. <laughs> Let's hear a story about <laughs> candied bacon. I threw a party one time in a brewery. And I made, and I, it was barbecue and beer. And, um, I made a ton of candied bacon because I wanted snacks for people and I didn't want to pay a caterer for appetizers. And I just put them in pint glasses and used them as centerpieces, <laughs> like just stalks of candied bacon coming out on every table. Your house must have smelled delicious. I thought nobody was going to eat these. I was like, people aren't into like sweet meat, right? Gone. They were gone. The first thing to go. It was crazy. People love mm -hmm. candied bacon. If And they, even if you were afraid to try it, try it. It was, it was so good. Like literally coated with a hard outside, like maple. Oh my gosh. Delicious. So I, don't know, watering. I don't know how dedicated our listeners are and if they remember our trip to it was October 2020 the three of us went to Disney for the first time since this reopening and we went to the Edison and oh, we got yes. their clothesline bacon this is the same kind of idea um that was delicious too but th this bacon I'm telling you it is so thick and which is why it's 10 it's ten dollars but it's um Hey, but it comes with chips. It comes it's with all that chips. and a bag of chips. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. My kids would be like, oh my God, mom, never say that again. You're so cringy, mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, kid. You're not my target audience. Moving <laughs> on. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I have. I have a lot of favorite snacks in Magic Kingdom that I haven't checked the prices on. Um, of course, we all know I've never gotten to try the stinking tater tots. How much did those cost? Oh, uh, yeah, those those come, came in under you know in, within our ten dollar budget, so yeah. for sure. But just stay tuned. Oh, um, okay. Mm. <laughs> And now, a word from our sponsors. Mouse Moms are avid travel enthusiasts, and our podcast is sponsored by Kingdom and Cruise Travel. If you're interested in booking a vacation to Disney or any other worldwide destination, be sure to check out our website, kingdomandcruise.com, and our Facebook page at Kingdom and Cruise Travel. So let's move on to animal kingdom animal kingdom was a really hard one for me to do because i think animal kingdom is so underrated for snacking all day i just i think do next you? to epcot i think it's the best park to really? snack. really that's really interesting to hear you say because i guess i've not snacked enough in animal kingdom like i think animal well i just think animal kingdom has great dining options quick service options and so I, I don't know. Options are crazy. What? And, I just and never get, buy snacks, except for this first one. Like this one is lunch for me. It is. Again, like these snack size portions, which for me, it, it's totally good for a lunch. Um, So we're talking, of course, about the baked macaroni and cheese topped with pulled pork. And you can get that at Eight Spoon Cafe, which is located on Discovery Island in Animal Kingdom. This one is $6.79. And I'm saying that like in disbelief because it, it's big. It's a big. It's big. <laughs> it's, it's big. big. It's totally enough for you for a, for a lunch. And it's delicious. It's so delicious. It's pretty sinful. My daughter actually got this as a meal at um, the barbecue know. place, Flame Tree. Oh, Flame Tree Barbecue. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, she was not allowed to eat all of it because <laughs> I needed to eat some of it. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a good one. So. Um, but if you're looking for something sweet, of course, the place to go is the Kusafiri Coffee Shop. They always have some delicious bakery items in there. That's a great place to go for breakfast. They usually have breakfast sandwiches. But today we're talking about something sweet. You'll want to grab their colossal cinnamon roll. Again, it's bigger than your head. It's shaped like Mickey. It's warm and gooey. 
make sure you get the extra icing on the side. Make sure you get them to warm it up for you. This one is $7.49, and it is definitely something that is shareable for sure. It really stacks up against the Gaston's it cinnamon really roll. Does. It's I just promise. like a hidden gem. I have to be, I don't know that I've ever been to the Kusafiri coffee shop. I always go to, I always stop at, what's the Starbucks one? Yeah. In it's Dino on, on Discovery Starbucks. Island. Yeah, you pass Starbucks before Creature yeah. Comforts. Creature Comforts. Called. Always go there and get a breakfast sandwich. But now I'm going to have to check this place out. I've never done it. They make and, great um, breakfast sandwiches, and it's right next to the safari. So if you're trying to hit the safari first thing in the morning yeah. with a lot of animals, it's... <sighs> so there you go. Walk right on by, because I do always hit the safari safari in the morning. So walk right on by Creature Comforts and go to Kusafiri Coffee Shop and get a colossal cinnamon roll. They also have good specialty coffees, which I like those better than Starbucks. I can get yeah, Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind is it Joffrey's or is it just it's Joffrey's, I think, but they just make all of the, you know, yeah. you can have a macchiato or what you can get all the same things you can get at Starbucks. You can just get them better <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'm gonna have to try that. And I'm totally I think that we're going to need to do some kind of like uh uh, side by side comparison of Gaston cinnamon roll with the yeah. We're going to have to do that. We're going to have to do like a little park hop. They're definitely com comparable. The, you know what it is? The line at Kusafiri is a lot shorter <laughs> than at Gaston's. So that adds to your enjoyment. Yeah. And I think they're as tasty. That's my opinion. All right. Try it. It's definitely worth a try. And next time you go, don't make reservations in Animal Kingdom to sit down and eat. Snack. Yeah. Snack yeah, it is fun. All right. So moving on to Hollywood Studios, we have our sweet and our savory options. So this is where I said, let's talk about not uh, tater tots, but you can get tachos at Woody's Lunchbox in Story Toy Story Land. So if you're not into the Friar Nook or you want to try something different in Magic Kingdom, they still do have tachos at Woody's Lunchbox, but these are, um, these are $9.99. It's a huge portion. They're potato barrels with um, beef and bean chili, shredded cheese, queso, tomato, and then topped with some corn chips, sour cream, and green onion. It's really it sounds good. pretty good. I'm not going to yeah. say it doesn't sound good. Again, I think we're going to need to do a side by side. We do. And Fryer Nooks has other flavors besides just like the Mexican kind of flavor. of. I really of want the buffalo chicken ones because I'm still yeah. trying to do a comparison between those and the ones at Green Eggs and Ham over in Universal, yeah. which were so good. They were so good. Mm. Yeah. I, we had some tasty snacks over at Universal. We did. We did. Oh, and again, a lot like how if Lori was here, she would be rallying for the cheeseburger egg rolls. It was really hard not to include the Ronto wrap here because the In Ronto Hollywood wrap Studios. is still a, a, a snack. I think it's more than $9.99. It's, it's more than 10 Yeah, I think it's more than $10. And we talk about it all the time. We do. So tachos are good too. Not to be <laughs> underrated. Go no, I'm going to have to try those. And so, also, can I put a, a small plug in also? If you are going to go to Woody's Lunchbox and stand online for the tachos, you have to get the adult lemonade there also. Which oh, yeah? Is so delicious. Really? It's really good. It's, it's, you know, you and I with our sweet drinks, it's just sweet enough, but there's yeah. enough part because of the lemonade that it, okay. it goes down fast and dangerous. That's kind of like the drinks over at Ronto Roasters. They're a little, yes, a little right. dangerous too, like not too yes. sweet, but a little kick. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are good. Jen, I'm going to have to argue with you about the sweet one. Well, bring it. <laughs> I'm going to say it's got to be the oatmeal or the carrot cookie cake thing. Yes, that is definitely the iconic sweet treat in Hollywood Studios. But I feel like when you're in Disney World, you need to eat some theme park food. So I needed to, <laughs> I needed to include a funnel cake. Because when I think funnel cake, I think theme park. And nobody does it better than this place. We're talking still in Hollywood Studios. We're talking about Epic Eats. 
It's the little kiosk located right next to the Indiana Jones show, which is now open. So you can get a little treat. Um, and this one is extra. This it's one is not called, just funnel cake. <laughs> it's not just funnel cake. It's called the Glimmer and Shimmer Funnel Cake because everything's Hollywood at Hollywood Studios. It's funnel cake topped with cookies and cream and soft serve vanilla ice cream topped with golden cookies and sprinkles. It's $8.49. It's definitely a shareable dessert. It's huge. Wow. Yeah. That's all I can say. And the other, I mean, literally, this one was really hard to do because I feel like this theme park in particular has a lot of really good sweet treats. So the carrot cake cookie is one that is really popular and huge, definitely under $10. The other, the Jack Jack Num Num cookie, really yeah. delicious, huge. Lots of honorable um, mentions here. The Wookiee cookie also the is Wookie really cookie. good. So a lot of options, but I'm I'm standing strong by that glimmer and shimmer funnel cake only because, again, for eight forty nine, like literally, I could get one of these and my four kids could have enough of a taste to be all happy. Yeah, right. It's plenty huge for everybody to share, just like that colossal cinnamon roll. Yes. Exactly. Um, it's funny. We were talking about funnel cakes just this weekend. So uh, Saturday was St. Joseph's Day, which my dad's name is Joseph. My daughter's name mm -hmm. is Josephine. And it's so, um, you know, it's like the Italian response to St. Patrick's Day. So I had my dad over and we had the traditional pizza and wings of St. Patrick's Day to or St. Joseph's Day. Totally not traditional. But one thing that is traditional is what uh, Sicilians call sfingi, which is essentially funnel cake. And um, my, my grandmother used to make this. I was little and you just like the big deep fat fryer, you know, and you make the special dough and she would just drop it in with spoonfuls. And this is what we were talking about. And then you take it out and you, you dust it with powdered sugar and you eat it. But they're they're like each one's like a little donut ball, right? Like a, a funnel cake ball. And then my dad's like the real way to do it, though, for St. Joseph's Day is you put it in a piping bag and then you swirl it. I'm like, that's funnel cake, dad. That's that's what funnel cake is. He's like, well, but it's not. So then I guess for St. Joseph's Day, they take the funnel cake batter and they make a ball out of it with the piping bag. And then when it comes out, they cut it open and they stuff it with like uh, cannoli cream or whatever. Why do I not know about this? I did not know about the stuffing. I was like, I'll tell you what, dad, next year on St. Joseph's Day, he'll be 85. I was like, we will we'll make the spingy the way the what did he call it? Sfingi San Giuseppe is what he called it. So I guess that's what it is. I'm starving. This is a, not a good March idea. 19th coming, coming to a house in Charlotte near you. Well, I'm coming to a house in Charlotte <laughs> next year. That sounds delicious. Yeah. So, I mean, who doesn't love a funnel cake? That I still think it, it should be called Sfingi. And if you're not Sicilian, it's called Zeppoli. <gasps> Zeppoli. Oh, is it the same thing? It's Zeppoli. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, count me in. Yeah. All right. So we can't forget Disney Springs. So if you are in Disney Springs for a treat, we have a couple of options for you, starting with our sweet treat under $10. Uh, if you have not been yet, you need to get yourself over to Gideon's Bakehouse in the landing. If you're lucky enough to get in, this place has been open for over a year now. And Can I we talk still... about that for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> You've not been either. I, I look I, in through the window. I will not wait that long for a cookie. Is I've it worth had the it? cookies. You know why? Because Lori bought them. Lori got there early and bought them for us and brought them over to um, – the resort and met me there with the cook. I need to just like go down there by myself and like just hit all the things that I would never do with my family. It's just, well, so my parents were there for like a month or so, remember? And they tried several times and the lines, even going at like 1030 in the morning when it was just opening up, the lines were ridiculous. It's so, crazy. And so they're not doing a virtual queue anymore? They are. Oh, they they are. are. The virtual queue is ridiculous. And then you go and then you stand on the line once your queue, your number is called. It's it's insane. And and like you said, though, it's been open for a year and this is still going on. Yes. It's popular, y'all. It sounds like people, I mean, if, if you're- It's for sure worth it. The cookies were 
uh, they were delicious. And you definitely, so between the deliciousness of the cookies and inside, if you can catch a glimpse, it is tiny. It's tiny. There's no way, they just can't accommodate a good, it, it has nothing to do with COVID. They just, it is a tiny a spot. They can't accommodate more people. But if you are lucky enough to get in, it is super cool inside. That's kind of half the appeal is just that vibe in there. It's very like steampunk meets Haunted Mansion. It's really cool. But the cookies are definitely not too shabby either. Um, we tried several. I don't remember how many Lori got us. There were a I lot. Don't know. And, and again, they're the size of your head. Um, but definitely if you go, you need to try the original chocolate chip cookie at $6. It is literally the size of your head and it, it was delicious. So go for and it. I mean, yeah. So like you said, the vibe is really cool and certainly there's hype maybe because people see people standing in line and just, you know, because oh, sure. it's small inside, but right. it's the, the cookie is legit. It has been named the best in Orlando, the best on planet earth. So, um, <laughs> made from scratch every day. I'm going to have to try one someday. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get me some cookies, but I'm Lori. <laughs> just always so busy. Like there's just always so much in the scheme of things I want to do when I'm there. Yes. I'll have to prioritize this. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for a savory option, we love anything from the Daily Poutine. It's located in Town Center in Disney Springs. They serve all sorts of specialty ones and they change their menu a lot. Usually they have an Italian one. They'll have a Korean one. I know recently they had like an Indian curry kind of uh, take on it. Um, but we always like the traditional Canadian poutine. It's French fries, beef gravy, cheddar curds. That one comes in at $9.49. So again, it's great for a, a little meal for you. Um, or if you do want to use it as a snack, it's definitely shareable. So um, I think it definitely stacks up against the one in Canada in, in Epcot. So I agree. I finally um, had the one in Canada in Epcot. Um you guys had, which one did you get? Well, we Lafayette. had, oh, the Bor Borgen, beef bourguignon. Yeah, I think I had the other one, the the like traditional one. Yes, nothing stacks up to that beef bourguignon one. That I've never tasted anything that delicious in my life. But okay. the traditional one, and then they always have one in the refreshment port at Epcot. That's the traditional right. poutine. I think it's there. It's definitely comparable to the daily poutine in Disney Springs. So, well, that's good to know. So I can save my Epcot um, belly for other things, and I can get this when I go to Disney Springs. I've only had the traditional one in Disney Springs. I do remember getting it to share with someone, but she wasn't feeling good, so I had to eat it all by myself, which was really a shame. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, okay. See, she doesn't even remember. So um, I've always wanted to try the Korean one, but it has kimchi on it. And I'm not down with kimchi. I should be because. You probably remove. Have or you could just it. ask them to do it without the kimchi. But then yeah. I feel like, what's the point? <laughs> yes. You could have it have them put it on the side so that you control. Maybe control that's true. Much. I think the Korean one is pretty popular too. I mean, and I only say that based on the very scientific research that every time I walk by someone's ordering it. Yeah. <laughs> that is good research. I Not mean, being underestimated. Anecdotal at best, but what are you going to do? I've never seen the Italian one. What's on that? I haven't either. It's sausage and peppers and onions and tomato sauce. Oh, I, that sounds I mean, good. Yes, I don't eat poutine at, on a normal. Like, where do I get that here? Right. So for me, I, traditional. I like the traditional because it's not something I can get at home. I'll eat anything on French fries. Right. So yeah. I would want. I want to try all the different ones. There's our next T-shirt. I'll eat anything on French fries. I know. I was just thinking when I was getting dressed this morning that I'm sorry I didn't um, order uh, my favorite snack is Epcot shirt before it got kicked off of our sales site. Um, <laughs> That's what happened, happen. right? Yeah, I think yeah. I have I have one. You can have it. Lori was wearing it the other day. So we have um, a little t-shirt shop for some of the things that we say, and we put t-shirts up on there every now and again. And apparently one of them was not allowed, maybe because it mentioned Epcot without giving credit to Disney. Yeah. 
So um, unfortunately, I did not order one in time before my favorite snack is Epcot t-shirt got taken down from our from our store. I feel like we have some friends with a cricket thing though. So they I've got a cricket. I just don't know how to use it yet. I've had it for a year and a half. I've never taken it out of the box. That is not good. In fairness, when I got it, it didn't plug into the outlets in my house, but, and then I shipped it back home and I just, who, I just haven't had time to figure it out. It's on my list. It's on my list. Lots of things are on our list. Right. My list is getting so long. But But not on our list are 10, 10 snacks under $10. Exactly. Cause we that one. That was now, good. Now I have a list of things to try. I honestly, like I'm looking back at this list, Jen, I don't think I've tried a lot of these. I've had I the really, brioche ice cream I sandwich. Really spend, delicious. I spend too much time eating. <laughs> I've had the fruit and waffle sandwich. I have not had the candied bacon. I've had the mm. pulled pork. It's fantastic. I got to test out this cinnamon roll tachos. See? Funnel Look cake. Funnel cake. Never got the cookie. Seriously, I haven't tried half of these things. All right. We got some things to do. <laughs> All right. We have a to-do list, but let's do our uh let's do our mouse tip. The mouse tip. So if you are looking for snacks on a budget, you can always stick to the Dole Whip. It comes in at $5.99. Popcorn is $6.50. Um, the classic Mickey, Mickey, the classic Mickey ice cream bar is $5.99. Um, if you happen to love popcorn, it's also a great idea to purchase your popcorn refillable bucket for about, I think it's around $14 now. Is it only $13, $14? And then for the duration of your trip and anytime you go back, you can refill that bucket for only $2, which I think is great. <laughs> Unless you're like me and you buy a popcorn bucket and you schlep it down twice now two times to Orlando and leave it in your resort room and never take it into the parks. You could do that. That's what I do. Don't be like me, but it really is a deal. I mean, because you get to keep the bucket, the buckets are always super cute. Remember the big figment situation. Those Um, I believe are more than $13. Yes. The ones that are, that are cheaper, like the 13, 14 range. Those are just the plain little, little buckets. I'm trying to remember how much the Mickey 50th anniversary was. I don't think it was, it was definitely under 20. I think it was like 16 or 17. I don't think it was a whole lot more than 14. I really don't. I really don't. It's a good idea though. And in Epcot, especially my kids like bringing those back to Epcot because you can get the caramel popcorn over in Canada and you can get usually over by the figment at the kiosk um, there? At the kiosk there, you can get different flavored popcorns. So is that more than $2 if you do no. the different flavor? You can refill with the flavored popcorns yeah. for $2? Yeah. See, I got to do it. Again, I don't. I give out the tips and I don't follow them. I mean, I bring them. Well, again, remember, I was voted most likely to win the lottery and lose the ticket. So that's what I do with my popcorn <laughs> bucket. I forget to bring it into the park. Uh, oh, you're funny. Anyway, those are some of the classics, and those are always a great deal. Who doesn't love a uh, Mickey ice cream bar or a Mickey sandwich, as we mentioned earlier? If you're not, if you're not doing the brioche one, absolutely. We'd love to hear about everybody else's ideas. Yeah, let us know. Um, let us know, and thank you for spending another fun episode with us. So, if you can't get enough of us, be sure to follow us on our Facebook group at Mask Moms Podcast. That's where you can comment for sure about what your favorite snacks are and give us some more tips that we don't even know about. We go live in our Facebook group every week on Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with all the news out of Disney for the week. So, tune in to that. And as always, check out our blog at Mask Moms with an S blog.com. And of course, be sure that you're following along with our show. Um, make sure that you write us a review as well. That really helps us know how we're doing and we appreciate it forever. And we will see you next week. Thank you. (laughs) 